New report shows millions of LGBTQ plus Americans could be missing from population estimates. As we head to the busy upfront advertising buying season, it's worth noting that millions of Americans and possibly hundreds of billions in LGBTQ plus spending are possibly missing from the current industry recognized estimates of at least 20 million LGBTQ plus people in the United States with 1.4 trillion in household spending. These well-intentioned tallies are only counting people who live their sexual or gender identity openly. It does not count the more than 16 million more or more individuals not yet living openly in their LGBTQ plus identity, meaning there could possibly be nearly 40 million LGBTQ plus Americans, though 16 million people are estimates pulled from Gallup's own figures and statistics. As a result, this population adjustment would conservatively make the household estimated spend by queer people to be about $2.3 trillion, significantly higher than most estimates. In the article written by Michael Drew Kelly in Advocate.com, he asks, quoting, Counting LGBTQ plus people in a poll means counting openly LGBTQ plus people. But do those not yet comfortable identi identifying as queer not absorb LGBTQ plus content? and or not respond to anti-LGBTQ plus politicians at the polls, end quote. He says, if you harmonize the number of those openly identifying as LGBTQ plus and those who are closeted, you'd get about 12% across the generations, on average, identifying as LGBTQ plus. You know, I understand the importance of counting LGBTQ people in terms of entertainment, but what not really, really matters is in terms of the census. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The National LGBTQ Task Force does a huge, huge campaign uh, in advance of every census called Queering the Census. Yeah. And that's because it's one, it, it's important to stand up and be counted if you're openly LGBTQ, and even if you're not, because what is determined by the census? Appropriation dollars, congressional districts, yeah. you know, healthcare, healthcare, healthcare education, education. education. So much. Mm -hmm. yeah. So well said. Yeah. So it's important to be counted. And how do you account for people who aren't ready to identify as LGBTQ? You know, I like that perspective. I, I, I like the way you worded it too, because I mean, the, the story essentially reduces us to consumers, right? Like right. that is like, are we, what is it we're spending money on? What is it like? And then when we reduce us to consumers, like any kind of problem in this, in, in, in the capitalist system, right? Is, is that also then we're, we're, we're targeted as consumers and like, oh, you know, you'll drink Smirnoff or you'll do whatever. And like, and this is, that's when- Is that good or bad? I, I think it can co-opt very clearly a social and political movement that you become like, you know, you gay pride and also drink Smirnoff or whatever. Right? Like that is, a, that's very rainbow much- Rainbow capitalism. It's 100% like it rainbow capitalism, yeah. right? No, and that's, that's, I would say that's bad. Like, I mean, that is, there's, uh, I, 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 I do appreciate, though, the necessity for us to be counted, um, but I like the way you worded it. There is like the where, where let's count it where, I mean, it's not like if we just say like, who's watching gay porn? It's just LGBTQ people, goodness. Like how many, yeah. how many straight porn men do I know who watch that. gay yeah. porn? Yeah. Yeah. Already knows that. Allegedly, yeah. Yeah. allegedly. Yeah. You say allegedly. <laughs> you, I don't, I don't allege. <laughs> you don't allege nothing. You know, you know, what, you know what's sad about this? Like, I mean, not embarrassed. It's just, I think we all probably know people. I know people that are afraid to put that on the yeah. census, okay? I mean, and you would think that in this day and age, and now with the amount of hate that's being targeted towards our community and the governor that we have here in South Florida, I have a feeling that those numbers are going to be even worse. Yeah. You know, there's going to be more people that are afraid. I mean, you know, I know healthcare workers that are afraid to even touch somebody in LGBTQ+, plus because they really feel that Ron DeSantis is going to have their um, their licenses and destroy yeah. them, yeah. you know? What so, if you're a teacher? Sure. Yeah, goodness. yeah Even but, worse. But the, the counter to that, though, I think the importance of like counting individuals and trying to advocate for people to identify themselves in these senses is that one, um, when we, first of all, when the numbers are growing, people in communities could all, all of a sudden identify that, wow, I have, you know, I'm not 5,000 5, people in my community. Yep. Wow, I'm not alone. So like, let me like now stand up and say I am and be counted. Yeah. But I think more importantly too, for advocacy purposes, yeah. um, the more we identify, the more that we can show our elected officials that we're in their communities, we're part of their constituencies, the more likely they are to change their positions on policies, quite frankly. And so I think it's so critical that we try to advocate and we try to communicate that the importance of people uh, you know, you know, identifying. I know it's hard. 
I lived in the closet once upon a time. It wasn't easy, but I think the more we get out there, the more we communicate and talk about the you know, importance of it, I, the I, better I, we can advocate for ourselves. I, I, yeah. Ryan, I want to come to you uh, very specifically, just broad summary. Um, yeah. uh, this last election, uh, Charlie Chris running against DeSantis and Val Demings running against um, Moron. Okay. Um, uh, did the LGBTQ community turn out? I mean, task force said, eh, we're happy with what happened in LGBT. I know not happy with the election, I understand. Um, but uh, Demings and Chris lose b between 1.7 and 1.8 million votes. How did the LGBTQ community do in their advocacy in Florida? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in Florida in general, you know, across demographics, LGBTQ and not, people just did not show up in the way that they were supposed to. And I think we're seeing now the ramifications of a Governor DeSantis who wins by a larger margin than, mm. gosh, any governor in, in recent history and can go to the state legislature with Looks a super like a majority right. and like say, I've got a mandate. Mm -hmm. This is what the people want. You know, unfortunately, we are dealing with ramifications of that now. We are going to have a hard fight ahead of us to defend our rights, to crawl back and 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 get some of the rights that we are now starting to lose because we're going to have to work and do that again. Yeah. That could have been stopped if we had shown out in the last election, and it can be stopped if we show up in the next one also. Uh, you know, I want to follow up on that this point um, and a few points that were made earlier because I, I don't want to always be gloom and doom, but like, <laughs> but that is I also really want to appreciate the significance of LGBTQ consumerism, right, in affecting change. So like sure. um, that is if we think about the 70s with the anti Coors beer, you know, protests and like uh, perhaps the most famous in the 70s was the what was known as the gay cot that is, uh, you know, uh, protesting against Anita Bryant's uh, association with Florida orange juice, which was incredibly powerful, act up to this in the 80s and 90s, no doubt. They, I mean, how many? And and we have recently we saw that happen with Disney here in uh, Florida, and right? Florida orange juice in the 70s, for all intents and purposes, withdrew out of the hate space. Yeah. Right. that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, yeah. They, and well, they also did. They stayed quiet, right? But that is. L, you know, consumer. But we would prefer them shutting up than being an, a, a, an a, a, attack to join. The, yeah. the, right. But like yeah. that is that corporate activism is certainly changing. You know, the, has changed the face of the game. Um, but also, we can flex our our economic muscles by deciding who we who what, what products we buy, where we where we patronize, and like that is that's an important thing. So to know how many of us there are in that capacity is is really important too. You know, I think we, we get the conversation of this story right, but I just want to do a, a quick recap as I see it. Um, advocacy is incredibly important. Uh, we got our asses handed to us in this election. Uh, my, my question. Scientific uh, to, term. Uh, it's scientific. <laughs> <laughs> studied in college, <laughs> class, uh, political science classes. All right, we got our ass handed to us. But the reason that that is important and the reason why this number, if it's 12%, is important is because it would naturally lead, like the black community, the Jewish community, the Latino community, it would naturally lead to power at the polls and power in terms of influence and advocacy. Mm -hmm. so, That's the question yeah. here. So my question is very intentioned of Ryan. Did we turn out in the way we should have? No, probably no. we didn't. No. And as a result, we squandered that power and now we're marginalized and minimized even greater in the political structure in the governor's mansion and in the Florida House. And we're watching that in the session. That's bad news. Second, if it is 12%, it's very important in terms of even rainbow capitalism. The reason why, in my opinion, it is not bad is because if we were spending $2.3 trillion dollars of every estimate says about one and a half trillion dollars. That's very important because the only thing that's probably more powerful than political advocacy in America is greed in corporate America. <laughs> and as a result, we are a desirable consumer, which means that uh, X alcohol or X entertainment or X film company or X, 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 whatever it might be, a Procter and Gamble or the Florida Panthers mm -hmm. or whatever it is, uh, uh, they go, wait, LGBTQ community, rah, rah, LGBT civil rights. What we might also be talking about is we love the spend power of this demographic. Absolutely. And as a result, we create allies mm -hmm. in a completely different way. Sure. That's what's at play in this story. Now, it probably goes too far. To be honest with you, I appreciate advocates' point of view. In Britain, they're saying it's 3%. 
we say generally the Gallup polling it's seven percent we say if it's millennials or as but especially Gen Zers in identification in the community it's probably 20 yeah. percent yeah. and what this is suggesting is the real number if you if everyone came out would be 12 percent so seven to 12 percent that sweet spot is so critically important because whether it's seven or whether it's 12 the higher the number goes, the better our advocacy results are in Florida and in America for trans, for black, for um, uh, lesbians, for in every possible way. And the higher the number goes from 7% to 12%, the better support we get in corporate America. And we need a Disney. Yeah. We need a Procter and Gamble. Yeah, we we yeah. need NBC Universal yeah. because they have the ability to stand up against Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. That's why this story is important. Two Plus News is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.